All right, I'm just gonna go, go and get started. I am Michael Wesch. I'm a professor of cultural anthropology at Kansas State University. And just in case somebody is driving or walking around and just listening in, um, I always like to teach sort of in a universal way to uh, people who are learning in all different types of ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and describe a little bit about myself in case you're just listening in. I am a 45 year old balding guy in Kansas. Um, I'm gesticulating with my hands a bit here because I'm excited to see everybody and, and talk about uh, my own transformation as a teacher over the last five years that I've been teaching online. And uh, I think that pretty much covers it. So this is called How a Reluctant Online Teacher Found Purpose, Connection, and Adventure Teaching Online. Uh, so I want to start here. This is a picture of me uh, when I first started teaching online. I was on the floor a lot here in my office during uh, my first year of teaching. Uh, like many people, I was kind of devastated by the shift to online teaching. I used to teach in rooms like this. And even though this isn't very inspiring to look at, I loved the connection that I had with my students. I loved being able to actually see my students and talk to them and just the uh, shared space. And especially that, that little time afterward and little time before where you get to chat and have these great discussions. Those were the things that uh, I missed the most. And when I first started teaching, online, you know, I'm looking at this webcam and this is, this is, this is my connection to my students. And I found it really hard. The second thing that happened was I noticed that my students were very different. Uh, this was a great thing in one sense, they were far more diverse than I'd ever had before. Uh, in terms of in, in every metric you can imagine, they were more diverse, including age. I am a 24th year senior. <laughs> uh and so that forced me to think a bit differently about how I was teaching as well. Um, so at that same time, this is 2016, my third son was coming of age and learning how to go down the stairs. And I was thinking a lot about everything that I was missing in by shifting away from the classroom and going online and watching my own son learn to go downstairs. Now there's a number of things you'll notice about this uh, when you're thinking about what learning is all about and how people learn. Uh, one is he's incredibly persistent. Like he definitely wants to do this. He, he loves doing this. He just keeps getting back up and trying and trying again. And that's the kind of classroom I want, right? I want, I want a room where people are excited about what they're learning. They want to keep trying. They, they overcome adversity. And that's, that's what George is, is doing here. And you, you'll see here, he gets bopped around quite a bit. And yet he always just keeps getting back up. So here you'll see um, his brother come in and kind of bop him around a little bit, but he keeps getting back up. And what I realized in watching this is I, I kind of decided there were like these three basic principles of learning that I wanted to bring into my classroom. And one was that there has to be a sense of purpose. Like George really wants to go down this stair and he's gonna do it, even though it took him months and months to master it, he finally does it here. The second thing is that sense of connection. So look how he looks to the camera. He looks to me and mom to uh, validate him, himself and his learning. And the third thing is this sense of adventure, which really never ends. Here you see even months later, he just keeps trying and trying and he maybe doesn't quite have it down yet. You know, he still falls, but he loves it. He just keeps going and going. So this is what I wanted to bring into my online classroom, but I knew it was gonna be very difficult. So, you know, here I am looking at the webcam and just to give you a sense of what my first <laughs> few weeks were like, you know, I'd look in the webcam and I, for one, was extremely camera shy when I first started teaching online, uh, like really almost diagnosably camera shy, like just terribly camera shy. I could barely say anything, I had to retake, 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 retake. It would take me like three days to do about five minutes. And so I'd end up like laying on the floor a lot, just feeling like, man, I'm never going to be able to do this. Um, I really felt like maybe my teaching career was over or transitioning out. Um, I watched my first video back and this is me saying like, I'm super excited. This is what my face looked like when I told the students like, I'm super excited. <laughs> Obviously my face was saying a totally different message here. And so then I was back on the floor again. 
And then I watched, uh, I released my first video and I watched the engagement rate and it hangs out around 90%, 86% here. And then it just plummets. And this is under 50% here for the rest of the lecture. Um, so I was pretty devastated by all of these things and trying to figure out what to do. Well, fortunately I had a friend who had been teaching online for several years. This is my friend, Ryan Klataski. And he had this idea that you could use online learning for offline living. His basic idea was that, you know, your class is online sort of, but really people are out in the world. They're out there somewhere and you are in the world. And this is just the way that we connect, but we can do all kinds of things so that the class actually feels like it's out in the world rather than just online. So I took that advice to heart and actually sat down with Ryan for a whole summer and we rebuilt a, a, the anthropology class that we were teaching over the course of that summer together. And what we did was we created this simple design where we would basically try to create a sense of community and a sense of purpose and an adventure along the way. So you can see here, we have that sense of purpose, like there's a goal, something that's really worth it. Uh, we have this sense of connection by having this group of students going on this journey together. And then of course you have that sense of adventure in between. And the way we did this is we broke our entire course into 10 lessons and each lesson comes with a challenge. So you get to actually put that lesson into practice. So basically here's an, an example. Big idea number one is that human differences represent potential and possibility. Or another way to translate that is that differences are awesome. So this is an anthropology class. It's about all cultures everywhere throughout all time. And we just wanna point out that humans have been very diverse and those that diversity is, is kind of awesome. And so for the challenge, we send them out to go encounter diversity, to talk to a stranger and share their story. And so they would submit pictures and short stories like this, like this student just went to a parking lot uh, here in Kansas, found this couple and it says here, uh, what's your favorite, the, the student asked them, what's your favorite thing about being in love with each other? He says this, and then he started up his motorcycle and rode off into the sunset. Or there's this one uh, that they met this woman pushing carts in, in the uh, parking lot. And she says, I'm pushing carts now to get in shape for my surgery. I'm donating my kidney to my sister. And he says, wow, you're a hero. She says, ah, no, I'm no hero. Just making my world a better place like I'm supposed to do. And he says, I met Leia while she was frantically trying to save the life of a baby bird whose wings had gotten crushed by a shopping cart. And then I looked at the tattoo on her arm. And you can see the tattoo says, sisters and it's two birds flying in an infinity symbol. So it's just beautiful stuff was coming out of this. Uh, in lesson three, we talk about human evolution and our main big idea is that it was asking questions, making connections and trying new things that brought us down from the trees and took us to the moon. And so we have students try new things in lesson three. Uh, specifically, we have them do a 28 day challenge where they actually try to break a habit or start a new habit uh, and try to learn something new. So some students like try to do backflips uh, or other physical things. Some try to learn an instrument. Some try to learn a language. Uh, there's all kinds of different things that students try to do. And then they document their learning as they go. Rotate, land. Yes, I'm so proud of you. And this of course builds a great sense of connection because they're sharing videos and, and photos of their progress. Um, and then they do other challenges and they share videos and photos of what they're doing. And we just move through the semester getting the challenges uh, sort of getting more and more complicated as we go until by the end, they're actually like reaching out to people around the world and making global connections. And then finally, we have like some reflective exercises at the end where they rewrite their own story or the world stories, or they rethink their values. And finally, uh, it ends with a manifesto. And I'll just give you a sense of what this looks like uh, for one student. This is uh, what one student said about her journey. Just compounding these 10 challenges into eight weeks has just like super awakening. And I didn't expect to be that, that to happen. Like I'm 27, like I have gone out to the world and I have experienced things, but yet still like this 200 level anthropology class has like given me like tools to sort of deal with things that I either didn't know I was still dealing with or have not dealt with completely or in a healthy fashion. 
And it's kind of hard to believe, but um, just one year ago, this class that, that I you know, built with Ryan uh, that we were teaching online had gone totally global. You know, we were actually just thinking so far outside the box in terms of what a class could be. And we started sending our TAs abroad. So here's some of our TAs who are actually teaching from abroad and then running discussions from abroad. My name is Ben and I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm in Barcelona, Spain. I'm Amy and I'm headed to Samoa. I'm Joe, look at soon, I'm here in Zambia. Let's go, And so, you know, it was really inspiring. I mean, we were just having such a good time and uh, I actually started teaching from the road basically. So I thought, you know, this is cultural anthropology. This is the study of all humans everywhere. I should be out in the world actually making videos about people everywhere. And so that's what I was doing. So here's a little peek into what the class looked like as of exactly one year ago today. So one year ago today, this journey stopped and I flew home from India um, about this time last year. <laughs> sure if I look like a holy man, a blessed man, or a sucker. <laughs> and of course, uh, I was soon to find out that 2020 was not going to be like 2016. And so everything shifted. As soon as I came home, uh, you know, COVID started to spread here in the United States and everything locked down and we went to everybody was teaching online. It wasn't just me teaching online anymore. And even though I'd already had a lot of experience teaching online, there were some things that changed about the way I approached teaching um, because of the COVID moment. And ultimately what I wanna to pitch to you is that I think a lot of those things that, a lot of the adaptations that I made and I see my colleagues making are actually gonna be really useful for the future. And I think uh, there's gonna be some, some silver linings coming out of this. So basically the design principles um, that I had been basing everything on were these, you know, I was trying to create purpose, connection, and adventure. But once COVID hit, I added three other elements. And one was simplicity, two was a sense of freedom, and three was rhythm. So let me just show you what those look like. So first, in terms of simplicity, I wanted to make sure that there were the same elements every week. And these are really simple elements. So we start with the big ideas and intro video. There's some readings, there's a quiz, a reflection and an activity. And I made sure that every module was built so that these things are consistent every week and students could come to expect that consistency. So that's how I simplified everything. There was, I, I, there, could no, there could not be like any week that was a little different. I wanted everything to be the same so students could expect that simplicity. The second thing is I wanted to create a sense of freedom. And what I mean by that is I wanted to set my students free to actually, you know, not be tied to a screen. Everybody at that time, you know, was really suffering from Zoom fatigue. You might have remembered that word. Um, people were, you know, I, I think people wanted to be outside more, wanted to be just out. And so I made these, uh, basically I made a 10 minute uh, video at the beginning, which is just kind of gives them an overview of everything. Then I provide a big ideas PDF and then this mixtape here. So this is what it looks like. Um, every week it's the same thing and it's the same kind of intro space. And so here's what the hype video looks like. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. And so that, that just keeps going and for about 10 minutes and it just gets all the big ideas into a 10 minute video. So students have a nice, like quick start. Then we got this big ideas PDF and you can see over here, uh, it's just uh, this simple two pager that they can print out and that has all the big ideas on it for the week. And then the third element is the mixtape, which I think is maybe the best thing. My students just love the mixtape. And what it is, is it's a recording of all of the materials for the week. So they can just put in their earbuds and they can go out into the world and they can essentially read while they are out in the world. So the way that I do this is I actually read the material to them or I find recordings of the material for them. 
And that allows them to listen while they're doing laundry or while they're you know, commuting or just while they're doing whatever they wanna be doing out in the world. It sort of really sets them free. And I just wanna share with you uh, some of the feedback I've gotten about this from my students. These, these are some interviews done uh, by a third party, not by me, uh, that you'll hear my students talking about this. Oh, first, I'll, I'll give you a little taste of what the mixtape looks like here or sounds like. So this is, I put some visuals on top of this, but uh, imagine this as, a, as an audio. This is sort of the beginning piece of the audio and, and kind of compresses a lot of the ideas into it. Do we live in a world where there's magic and meaning or is it all just? If I were the kind of person who could believe, now would be a good time to believe. But I'm not that kind of person. Yes, Dr. Wesh. Yes, classmates. I believe. Are you listening to this? <laughs> yeah. Of course I'm listening. I like the idea that a voice can just go somewhere. Just kind of hang out. Seriously. It's really so here's my students talking about uh, some of the impact it's had on them. <laughs> Oops. Um, I have dyslexia, so reading books is really hard for me, but if you hear it and see it, there's a connection. Even it, just being able to open the module and look and see that it was a 57 minute audio recording, I would know that I need to devote at least that much time. I'm also an athlete at K-State, so I'm very, very busy and I have a job and I could turn on his recording when I'm driving to practice or when I'm doing laundry. I think I fooled laundry a lot of the time while I was listening to the... Seriously. It's all right, so you get the idea. Uh, and then the last thing I'll, I'll say about uh, sort of making a sense of freedom is that sometimes I did want to have a more traditional lecture where I would have a, a live stream and I would talk on Zoom. Um, and for that, I would just always make sure that I recorded it. And that way there could be some students who could show up and be at the live stream and they can have that sort of synchronous experience but other people might need to have that asynchronous experience. They, they just don't have the time to show up at a specific time or be online at a specific time. So those are the ways that I tried to create a sense of freedom. And then finally, I also tried to create a sense of rhythm. And that comes back to these you know, five basic elements that are in every week. And what I would do is I would make sure the students understood that you know, they should spend about six to nine hours every week on this material. And then I help them kind of think about how to organize that, you know, like three hours doing the readings, two to three hours doing the quiz and the reflection, and then one to three hours on the activity. And then I, um, the way that I set this up is that every week, everything is due Sunday at 11.59 PM. Um, and then I try to help the students by sending little notes and reminders and setting up a template for them where they can think about, you know, maybe you want to start on Monday with a big ideas video and download the MP3. Maybe on Tuesday, go for a walk or a run and listen to the readings or do the readings. On Wednesday, do the quiz. Thursday, write up your reflection. And then Friday, do the activity. And that way it's spread out throughout the week and you get your nine hours in. Um, then I also try to point out like why we do these things and how, you know, there's a certain balance here. Each one of these things is worth 20 points. And you know, the quiz measures content mastery, the reflection measures the, their ability to express ideas and the activity allows them to put the ideas into practice. And then you know, this works out 60 points a week, 15 weeks, that's 900 points. And then I have them do like one final portfolio of their favorite ideas worth hundred points. And that creates a thousand points for the semester. So that sort of embodies all that simplicity and rhythm and ultimately freedom that I'm trying to create. Uh, in another class, I have them actually create videos. And so I, I make a weekly schedule for them where it just actually kind of rotates through. So uh, Tuesday, they're watching the videos that they did the week before, like the student videos that they all created. So that's a fun place where we have like a live stream and we have basically like a watch party. Then on Wednesday, they learn something new. On Thursday, they plan their next project. On Friday, they create the new project. And then on Monday, they share their project. And then we go back to Tuesday where we watch each other's projects. And it keeps cycling through like that. Again, there's, there's a rhythm here. And so I try to show them again, you know, if, if you have this nine hours to commit to this class, then you, know, you can 
commit those nine hours like this, you know, one hour to watch, two hours to learn, one hour to plan, two hours to create, one hour to share. And then you still have these two hours that you can put in somewhere else. Now, all of this is not just for them. This rhythm and freedom and simplicity is for me as well. So when I have their schedule like really nailed down and it's the same every week, that means my schedule can also be the same every week. And so I know exactly how much time it takes me to prep each of these things and I can work them into my own schedule. And what I found was that when I created this simplicity, freedom and rhythm for my students, I found that I was experiencing the same thing. I was feeling the sense of freedom and rhythm and simplicity. And that was creating space for the things that I actually care about, like a, a sense of purpose, connection and adventure. So that's what I really love about this. And that's why I'm actually really excited about the future and what it means for where we might go in terms of creating purpose, connection and adventure in our online classes, as well as in our face-to-face -face classes when we're able to return to them. So just to give you an example of this, uh, there are three reasons why I think that this is a really good moment. One is that we've all developed new skills. And in many ways, I, I see myself as someone who's just maybe a little further along on the same road that a lot of other people are walking. Other people are gonna walk it in different ways and the journey will be different for different people in different disciplines. But um, I've, I've changed so much over the past five years that I've been teaching online and I can do all kinds of things I could never do before. And one of my favorite things is my ability to create videos for my students and actually show them what I do for a living, like actually show them the research that I do. And I just wanna show you like the impact this has. Like for me, this gives me a chance to share with them uh, not only like the fun of going out and doing one of these things, but I guess it allows me to share what I would consider like the hidden curriculum. And the hidden curriculum is basically, uh, you know, the things that you can't really say, but that are very important to you and very true. So one is that I want to show them that great questions can take you further than you've ever been. Um, so it was big questions that actually took me to New Guinea to, for over the last 23 years to build these friendships with these people and uh, go like, you know, uh, way off the, <laughs> the beaten trail here. Um, and I, I want them to know that this isn't just about me, that there's a, a journey out there for them as well that's just waiting to start. And as an anthropologist, I want them to know that people are more different than they might have thought, but they're also more the same too. last thing that I put up here is just that I, I want them to show that it's possible to build these amazing lifelong friendships across tremendous cultural divides. And when I think about it, these are really like the main lessons of anthropology. This is what I want them to leave an intro to anthropology class with. You know, to be honest, like I don't necessarily care if they remember like some obscure terminology about, you know, some kinship system in the Pacific. But I do want them to have like a zest for learning more about other people, uh, desire to connect deeply with them. And those are like the most important things. And I found that this, these skills I've developed in video are really important for that. Um, I also wanna point out that, you know, my best videos according to my students are not the videos like that. Um, my students say that, uh, you know, when they were asked which videos of Dr. Wesh has impacted you the most, they say the one where he mentioned my name and discussed my ideas, which of course you can do without anything fancy. You can just do that on your phone. So the second thing that I'm excited about is that we've reached more people in more ways. So I think back to the students I started with, a lot of non-traditional students, a lot of people who otherwise really can't be in school. And I realized that, you know, the future is bright because all of my colleagues now have this skill set that allows them to put their classes online as well 
And I think our online offerings in the future are gonna be really outstanding. And then the third thing you can see up here is that we've all learned so much from our trials and mistakes. Um, you know, this journey that I take my students on is, is similar to the one we're on right now. Like all of us trying to climb this mountain and we're helping each other out when we can and we're struggling at times. But, you know, many people I see finding their stride and they get to the, they, they, they get to this place where they're really changed and the, the final project, or you could say their class, the class is not what really matters. What matters is how they've changed, how the person has changed. And that's what I see so much with my colleagues is we all get together. And the first thing we want to talk about is how hard it's been over the past year. And that's obviously true, but through the complaints and through the, the, the hardships, I also am constantly hearing all these like amazing things my colleagues are doing and new skills that they've developed and all of that's going to transfer into the next phase, whatever that's going to be. So, so in many ways, I'm, I'm very excited about where this is going. And that's my main message for today.